if you have a small room is at most completely out of the question. If you want to build a home theater, but your room is small, are you just completely out of luck when it comes to having a full Atmos setup? Well, according to the author of this article that I came across, the answer is yes, you are just out of luck and you cannot build an Atmos theater in a small space. Now, the title of the article is after hours of measuring, I have come to the conclusion that full fat Dolby Atmos does not work in normal homes. First of all, I think the phrase full fat is delightful. I've actually never heard that before. I think it must be a, a British term, possibly. Uh, Mr. Alastair Stevenson. Alastair. Is that not the most British name? Uh, that probably next to like Nigel. <laughs> Uh, anyways, th that's, that's totally an aside. Uh, so according to Alistair, uh, a full fat Dolby Atmos setup is just completely out of the question in normal homes. Now he does clarify that because he is in the UK, I believe it's in the UK. Yes. He says, I am talking specifically about the UK where homes are smaller. He does, he does acknowledge that in the United States and in Australia, where some of his readers are, uh, that the homes are larger and that the rooms are larger. That is true. So in his house, his room is smaller. And so he has determined after much measuring, hours of measuring, that he's just out of luck and he cannot build an Atmos theater in this room. Now, how big is his room? Well, he doesn't say exactly how big his room is. But he does say that the average lounge, which I believe is what he's referring to as like a what we call a living room in the United States. He says that the average lounge is 184 square feet or 17 square meters. Because he doesn't specify the exact dimensions of his room, we're just going to assume that it's somewhere in the ballpark of that average figure that he gave, which is 184 square feet. So he wants to build an Atmos setup in 184 square feet. Well, what are, what are the dimensions? Well, if your room is 13 feet by 15 feet, that works out to 180 square feet. So we're just going to say 13 by 15. Now, I think for those of you who follow my channel and regularly watch my videos, you know exactly where I'm going with this. And, and if you haven't figured it out yet, the room that I'm sitting in is going to be a major, major giveaway, a dead giveaway on where, where I'm, I'm going with, with all of this, right? So here's the thing. Mr. Alistair, he has determined that he cannot build an Atmos setup. Now, what does he mean by an Atmos setup? He is attempting to build a 5.2.2 meaning five bed layer speakers, two subwoofers, and two height channels in a room that is 13 feet by 15 feet. We're going to get into this. We're going to get into this, but I'm going to I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler right now at this point. I am currently sitting in a room that is 11 feet by 11 feet. And this is a 7.2 point four Dolby Atmos setup. So I have two additional bed layer speakers and two additional height speakers in a room that is, I would say, significantly smaller than his 13 by 15. I've lost two feet on the width and four feet, four less feet on the on the length of of this room compared to the room that he's working with. Now, there is one one detail uh, that he that he specifies that is kind of a wrinkle that I did not have to deal with in this room, but I'll get to that in a moment. Now, what are his two main complaints? Well, his two main complaints, and not not complaints, but he calls them the, the cardinal rules. He has to break the cardinal rules of audio video design. And his first challenge is the screen size. So he wants to put in, let me, let me get this, let me get this straight. I want to, I want to read this so I don't mess this up. He says, for starters, most UK living rooms are too small to place all the speakers optimally. 
especially if you plan on having a big screen. And I am planning on having a big screen. I want to use an ultra short throw projector to throw a 120 inch or even 150 inch image. Okay, okay. So those are large screens, 120 or 150 inch. To put that in perspective, in my main theater, in my basement, my room is 14 and a half feet wide and 22 feet long. And my screen is 145 inches. And he is proposing to potentially put an, a screen that is five inches longer on the diagonal than my screen in my main theater. And he's going to put that in a room that is 13 feet by 15 feet. That is that is maximizing the, the, the wall space uh, for sure. Uh, I think, well, let me get to his problem. So he wants to put in a large screen, but the problem is, is that with a screen that large, he has to move his sofa all the way up against the back wall, which then he correctly uh, points out that the speakers on the rear wall will basically be pointed out in front towards the front of the room and they'll just go right by him. Ideally, you want the sofa to be back away from the wall. And he, he acknowledges this. But with a screen that large, he says, if I move the, the sofa too far forward, then he's having to move his head and his eyes are gonna have to track across the screen because the screen is too large. Well, there's a solution for that. And the solution is to shrink your screen. It's all relative. You can have a 150 inch screen, but if you're 20 feet back, that screen is going to appear very small. Conversely, you can shrink the screen size and move your sofa closer to the screen and the, the apparent size of the screen will be the same. So he could shrink this screen down to very easily. He could put in like a hundred inch screen and then he could move his sofa four or five feet back away from the back wall. And he would then be, let's say, if he moved it five feet off, then he would be 10 feet away from the screen. So with a hundred inch screen, 10 feet away, the screen is going to appear larger. And honestly, he could uh, get away with, at 10 feet away, he could probably get away with that 120 inch screen and that would be perfect. Like he, he would have a very immersive viewing experience. He wouldn't have to track. Uh, my brother has a screen that's 133 inches and he sits about 11 feet back from it. And that to me is about the perfect sweet spot uh, for immersion. So this guy, he could, he could do a 120 inch screen. He could still do that 120 inch screen, but then move the chairs forward about five feet away from the back wall. And then he would have just perfect, perfect viewing size. So that's how he could address the first challenge. The first challenge of getting a good screen size and being able to get the sofa back away from the back wall. His second challenge, the second problem that he sees is because the room is smaller, he is going to have a lot of speakers taking up a lot of space in the room. He's he mentions like having them, you know, being like a tip over hazard, you know, you run into them, they're taking up space. It's it's just a lot to have in the room. Well, there's a solution for that as well. And I've got them right here in this room. Now, RBH makes some incredible on-wall speakers. These speakers are only a few inches deep. They only stick out from the wall a few inches and their form factor is small. They're only a few inches tall, a few inches wide, and the sound that they put out is incredible. The, like you would not believe the volume and the quality of the sound that you would get from a speaker that is that small. So in this guy's room, the solution is to use on wall speakers. So for instance, RBH speakers would be great. I use as my sides and rear surround speakers, the five dash IW speakers. And those would work perfectly in this guy's room. And then for his LCRs at the, the left center right, he wouldn't have to use tower speakers. 
He wouldn't even have to use bookshelf speakers. He could, again, use on-wall speakers. Now, RBH makes uh, a speaker, an on-wall speaker, that's kind of uh, the counterpart or the equivalent of the 5IW. They are the 55-IW speakers. And you can orient them either vertically to use as a left and a right, or if you need to place one below a screen, you can orient it horizontally. The 55-IW speakers would be ideal. Two on either side of the screen and then one horizontal below the screen. Now you've got all of your bed layer speakers. And honestly, this guy, he, he was wanting to do a 5.2.2. He could do a, a 7.2.4 in his 13 feet by 15 feet room. So he could, he could do exactly what I've done. He could have the five IWs for the sides and the rear surrounds, the 55-IW for the LCRs, and then the height channels, uh, RBH has a couple different models. I have uh, the smaller model for the height channels, but they're already angled. You just mount them directly to the ceiling. Now, a lot of people in the UK have very accurately mentioned that we here in the United States are lucky because we have drywall for our walls and our ceilings, whereas in the UK, they a lot of times have brick or plaster. It's not as easy to mount the speakers, but if you are able to put screws into your ceiling and your walls, then you can mount these speakers very easily. They use French cleats for these uh, side and rear surround on-wall speakers. And then the RBH has this really cool uh, bracket that just, it's just a flat panel that screws directly to your ceiling. And then the speaker just slides right on. Could not be easier. And then as far as the wiring, he mentions the challenge of the wiring. I've found a solution. It's this cable raceway that will hold the wires and can be painted. I painted it the same color as the walls. Yes, it's visible, but after you paint it the color of the walls, like it hides pretty easily. Now over here on this, this channel that's leading up to this speaker, it actually looks in the picture on the video, it looks worse than it is because what you're seeing is a shadow. There's a window behind me and the channel obviously sticks out from the wall about a half to a quarter to a half an inch. And so the shadow is hit, the light is hitting the channel and then casting a shadow. So what you're seeing there is actually the shadow, the, the cable raceway itself, it, it hides quite well. I mean, yes, it is visible, but this is a pretty easy and non-intrusive way to run cable in a room that's already built out. Now, the last thing he mentions is the challenge of building this in a room that is not a dedicated space. Now, I do have, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I or I alluded to at the beginning of the video, I do have the luxury in this space to where this is a dedicated theater. This, this room serves no other purpose than to be a dedicated theater and a listening room. He is trying to build this in a lounge or living room. Now, I get that. That is, that is a challenge. But the thing is, with on-wall speakers, you could still set up your seating in such a way that when you're not watching material, well, not watching movies or listening to music, you can use the, seat, the seating and sit around and the speakers because they're mounted to the wall, they would just kind of exist and they wouldn't really be as intrusive as, as say bookshelf speakers or towers would be. So for instance, he's got his, his sofa, let's say it's a two or a three seater that's back, you know, four or five feet away from the wall. And then he could place chairs, like maybe, maybe a recliner or like a single, a single chair over here and a single chair over here. And so now he's got four or five seats that are usable that he can use when he has company over or you know they're using the room for something else right and then the chair could be placed next to the speaker so when you're watching a movie or listening to music the chair isn't blocking the speaker and then when you're not watching anything and you're using it as a living room to host people they can sit in the chair and they're not even going to notice the speaker my point is my point is is yes this guy measured for hours and hours and then gave up. But I think he was, I think he was looking at the wrong things and I think he didn't consider other options. I think he, he, he didn't, he spent hours measuring, but he needed to spend hours 
actually researching alternatives to to the things that he just assumed were a given. I it sounds to me like he just assumes that you have to have bookshelf speakers or tower speakers that are in the room that are taking up floor space and are intrusive. He assumes that the wiring is going to be kind of a mess. He assumed that he had to have a 150 inch screen and he had to have the sofa all the way at the back. He just assumed all of these things when really there are solutions to get around these challenges. And I feel like I've proven it by doing it. I did it here in this room, right? Like I proved that you can build an, an Atmos theater, a 7.2.4 in a room that's 11 feet by 11 feet. It can be done. And I even use tower speakers. I didn't use on walls for, for the front of the room and, and it's fine. But again, if you were using this as a multi-purpose room, I could have very easily done on wall speakers. It would have and had fantastic sound. So the point is don't give up too soon and don't assume that there aren't solutions to the challenges that you're facing. So if you have a small room and you wanna build a dedicated theater, I'm curious to hear A, if you've already done it and what challenges you had and how you, how you overcame those challenges, or B, if you're still in the planning stages and you think you have challenges that can't be overcome, I'm curious to hear what those are because I'm willing to bet there's probably a solution. Thanks for watching.